Hello everybody, it's Alex from the Remote Work Life Podcast, where tech and marketing professionals with a shared interest in remote work come to learn from those who know the world of remote work best. And I have a great guest with me today. I have James Haig, who is a director of a multimedia design consultancy uh, in the UK, based in the UK, a remote agency. And I just wanted to get James, I saw a video of him on, 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 uh, on LinkedIn talking about how the business is growing. So I just was really intrigued myself and I know that you'll be intrigued and I know, as I said before, that James uh, has got a lot of insight, a lot of things that we can learn from him. So I knew I needed to have him on the, on the podcast. So James, you are very, very welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Excellent. And as I always do, as I usually do, I really want to know, James, about you, uh, about We Are Sweet as well. That's the name of uh, James's business. So I'd like you, James, to talk me through your career, I suppose, your career journey and how you got to present day and linked up with Lou. Yeah, so so really kind of fell into it. Um, I, at an early age, sort of as a teenager, I never really kind of left the house and I just found myself on forums kind of accidentally learning HTML and PHP and JavaScript and things. Uh, and before I knew it, I, I was kind of 16, I was self-taught um, and I had all of these kind of marketable skills. I, I was still a kid, I never really realised it was a marketable skill at the time. Um, ended up picking up a few kind of small website projects on the side and, and of course a 16 year old but 11 years ago they were absolutely awful um <laughs> but um re realized then that i didn't really have the the kind of creativity or the design skill set that were really required to, to make these things work properly but i could code um so meanwhile lou was working with somebody else um lou is a creative he doesn't have any kind of sort of coding ability i'm sure he won't mind me saying that um but he's he's very very creative uh, and a fantastic designer he had he had previously linked up with a developer and they were kind of teaming up together they brought me in as a kind of a kid to just do some stuff that that they couldn't really didn't really have time for and just to kind of test me out um they ended up having some creative differences and stopped working together but by then we had actually had a few projects under our belt so it was a very easy decision just to say right let's 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 carry on let's just see where this takes us I think we've got a really good combination of Lou having the the design and the UX experience with me being able to actually create this stuff. Um, we, we worked together for about, I, I guess, about five years. Um, Lou was working at his first job in London. I was actually at uni at the time. We just worked on the side, just picking up projects here and there, wherever we, wherever we could. Uh, through a combination of contacts and, and really good luck, I think, um, we picked up what was our first kind of serious project with a company called IMG. Mm -hmm. um, we were we were asked to create the IMG Sport Video Archive, which is now known as IMG Replay. Wow! Um, so as as basically a couple of people in their early twenties meeting these people, saying, "Right, we're going to create the Premier League Archive, we're create the, <laughs> the Wimbledon Archive, the Rugby World Cup Archive." Um, we we were both a bit like. Well, um, that's a big one to start with, isn't it? It, it really is, and that was that was our first big gig, really, and still one of our one of our biggest to date, right? You can't get much bigger than than a company like IMG. We decided at this point we should probably kind of take this a bit more seriously. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> we um, we incorporated the, the limited company at this point. Um, Lou quit his job in central London. Um, I actually left uni to start the business properly. Um, couldn't really, really had no no choice but to take this opportunity. Um, since then, we ended up being introduced to other people in the sporting world, other federations, um, and also those clients that I was working with at kind of 16, 17. Some of those are still around today. In fact, one of them has grown to be one of our biggest clients today. Um, working together on that basis, just the two of us for quite a while, and then our client said to us, look guys, we love what you do, but we need more of it. Um, you're clearly so busy, you're so snowed under, uh, we need more of you. Uh, so it was, it was really a, a bit of a, a terrifying proposition, like L Lou and I kind of working from our you know, working remotely. Back when working remotely was a stigma as well. I bet back it was, when, yeah. Back, back when people thought working remotely meant that you weren't serious or, or weren't a proper business. 
Um, we decided that we don't have the money, we don't have the inclination to, to get an office. So we took on our first full time member of staff working remotely. And, and it was it, it, it was quite interesting for us to actually interview someone. And I remember I remember in the interview, he said to us, am I going to be like a contractor? Am I going to be freelance? Well, like, no, 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 this, this is real. This is, we're a real business. You're going to be on the payroll. You're just going to be working from your home rather than an office. Um, and since then, yeah, we, we, we've grown the team a lot since then. And, and where we are with the business at the moment is we've got a team of eight people all working remotely. Seven are in the UK. One is actually in Portugal. Uh, and we're, we're just trying to grow that whole idea of, of creating an agency that does work with really serious clients um, and has those kind of long term relationships that we can really provide value for. I think those stigmas are still there with some people. When, when, you, when you say you work from home, they say, oh, um, you must have time to do this or you must have time to <laughs> right. stick the, the food on and do some washing. I'm like, well, actually, I, I have an office and I to completely separate my office from my um you know my my uh, my chores at home sort of thing so yeah there is still a stigma but I, I guess back then I think because remote work now is so much more in the spotlight now than it was then it's it, the stigmas are sort of being debunked I suppose you could say so when did you employ your first other remote uh, team member. Um, uh, he, he's been with us for about three years now. So Lou, Lou and I were, were operating just as the two of us for quite some time before we took on our first full-time employee. Uh, yeah, he's been with us for about three years. Okay. And I'm intrigued as well, actually, why the name We Are Sweet? What, where, where did that come from? <laughs> it's, it, it's a long and very uninteresting story, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, so so it, it, even like 10 years ago, all of the good domains were taken, all of the good limited company names were taken. And Lou and I sat probably for about three days and we got to a point where we were just going through the dictionary and just opening pages. <laughs> um, we kind of decided we liked the We Are thing. So like We Are Something. We thought that was quite cool at the time. Um, and we, and we were just shouting out words. Honestly, we were doing this for days. We, we'd come up with something we like, check if the domain is available. And the no. taken. <laughs> so frustrating. And, and then someone in the room um, just shouted, sweet. And we're like, oh, we are, we are sweet. That could work. Is the domain available? <laughs> we, we expected it to be gone, but it was there. And that was it. That was, it we, we, we just didn't want to spend any longer thinking of company names. Um, we, we, we get a lot of people talking about it, though. I, th- I think it's fairly unique. Well, I think it's good when you get people talking about it because it it, it gives it has that certain amount of um, curiosity to it. But it I mean it tells me that you know we're in a good place. We know what we're doing. We're not. We know what we're all about. You know, we deliver. That's what it says to me anyway. So yeah. that, that's brilliant. That, that's that's exactly what I wanted to say to you. <laughs> I like the name. I like it. So you. you've got eight in the team. You've yep. got um, you're all remote, UK and Portugal. Um, what is the, what's the, I suppose, what's the makeup of your team? So I'm assuming that, you know, you've got designers, you've got developers, etc. Yeah, we're predominantly dev. Um, so there's Lou and I, we're, we're directors. Uh, both of us are based in the southeast of the UK. So Lou and I do see each other face to face probably a couple of times a week. We're always in and out of London meeting clients. Um, then we've got um, we've got Ash, we've got Jake, we've got James, full time developers. Um, they're scattered across the UK. Um, they're they're really fantastic guys. They've really kind of got the whole um, the, the the whole culture that we're trying to create, and they really get what we're doing. Um, we've got another James. So yeah, you you did count right. That is three Jameses. Um, <laughs> so so uh, affectionately known as JT. He's our project coordinator. He's our most recent hire. Um, Lou and I found that we were doing so much of the business development, so much of the marketing, so much of the sales. We just didn't have time to coordinate projects and make sure things are happening on time. With web projects and systems, there are so many dependencies. There are so many kind of little answers that you need. You always need to chase the client. You always need to make sure that you've got absolutely everything you need for the project. Um, And in all honesty, things were just slipping through. Lou and I weren't effective at it because we were trying to do too much. Uh, So we realized that we need someone whose sole responsibility is just to make sure that, that the machine works, that the machine is constantly delivering, that, that clients get chased and clients understand what's going on. Um, so JT is, is, is a non-technical person, but we found that also to be really good um, because 
as developers and, and being one myself, um, I find that I often kind of, uh, when I'm testing my own work, I find that I, I, ju I just I just don't notice things that might be wrong um, or, or something might be wrong and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's because of that thing in JavaScript and that's fine. But a non-technical person will say, yeah, but that's wrong. You need to fix that, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, then we've got Nick. He's a non-exec director. We've been working with Nick for a couple of years. Um, he, he basically just, we meet up with Nick once a month or so. We'll talk to Nick about where we are. We, we joke that he's a bit of a kind of a, a business therapist. Um, <laughs> Lou and I just get, get our thoughts out in the open. He's a bit of a coach. He's a bit of a mentor. And he's really helped us to get from where we were maybe three years ago with one, maybe two full-time people to where we are now. Um, so Nick has been absolutely brilliant. Uh, and then we've got Helen, who's our part-time bookkeeper. Uh, she's the one that's in Portugal. Um, I can't actually remember the last time I've seen Helen face-to-face. -face. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she's absolutely brilliant. Uh, she's semi-retired. She does bookkeeping for a couple of small businesses um, and just has it fit around her lifestyle, which is perfect for us. Sounds good to me. And I, I, I mean, again, remote work is, is, is the main theme of this. And you've got, it seems to me, and I'm, I'm sure this is not the case, but You've got you've put together a team of eight pretty sort of. Um, is it, is it, I mean, I'm sure there's been friction there. I suppose when because obviously hiring is is not an easy thing to do, but it seems like you've you've <coughs> built something and you're building something that's very, uh, you know, is delivering on what you what you wanted. Um, is you, you you put together a team of people who are. are work together well as well I'm, I'm, I'm assuming as well because you obviously getting all these these clients through as well so from your respect uh, James what effect has has remote working had on on your life I mean I don't know if you could speak for your team as well but what effect yeah, has it had yeah, on yeah. your life um, so, so for me, I'll be honest. I've never really known anything different. Right. Um, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of fortunate that this is something I, I maybe take for granted. Um, in, in my sort of ten year career, I've never, I've never worked for somebody. I've never worked in an office. So I've just kind of had to figure it out. Um, I remember back at uni before, sort of before Lou and I landed the big project, we were still working on things on the side. So I was working on a degree and also working with Lou. Um, being at uni, my desk was in my bedroom and I found it so difficult to switch off. Mm -hmm. um, I was just constantly stressed. I, I'd, I'd, I'd be laying in bed just looking at my computer thinking I need to get that work done. Um, so for me, I found that having an office um, like yourself is is so, so important um, so that when, I, when I'm done in the evening, I close the door and then I'm kind of back home psychologically. It's really, really important. Um, Lou has his, his home office in his lounge. Um, he, he doesn't struggle with that like I do. And so I think everyone treats it slightly differently. Everyone has their own way of, of kind of working more effectively remotely. Um, we've got someone, um, our, our first employee, he was a new dad when he joined us. Um, so it worked really well for him because he was able to help with childcare, but also still able to hold down a full-time job and, and, and still sort of do what he wants to do. Um, we've got somebody who plays in a brass band. Um, he often has music lessons, so, sometimes during the day, he sometimes has, has gigs where he'll need to kind of be away on, on a weekday. Day. And absolutely fine like crack on um, we, we're so happy for people to kind of have a life I, I don't want people to work for we are sweet and think that they can't do other things um, and yeah we've got someone who plays football on on Monday afternoon yeah absolutely fine um, we, we really encourage people to have a life and do, and do things as well as working for us so you know in that sense I mean I think a lot of people like remote work because of that flexibility obviously like like we, we all get our work done we all have our plans and our schedules inside of work we get it done but it sounds like you're very much into supporting um, the extracurricular things that that um, people do and parenting actually also is another um, common thread that comes into the reasons why people um, take up remote work and you're supporting that as well which is it sounds wonderful to me and yeah, absolutely. You, you've, you've got to. Um, I, I, the whole culture we're trying to create here is that, that we're all, all, all part of the same team. You know, like it's not Lou and I cracking the whip. It's not anything like that. We're just all trying to achieve 
really good stuff. We're just trying to deliver really great projects for really great clients and just keep everyone happy. And that's the team included. Um, we, we've got a really, well, we're only a small team anyway, but we've got a flat structure. So if anyone wants to shout up about something, anyone's got any opinion on how we could maybe do things better, we really encourage it. Um, we want everyone to feel like a core part of the team because because they are. Mm-hmm. And do you get, I mean, you mentioned you're meeting, meeting Lou, did you say uh, every two, every couple of weeks? Uh, it it, it, dep- it depends. Sort of like we'll we'll have week weekly stints where we're sort of in London every single day. We're meeting clients every day, or we've got strategy planning sessions every day. Um, I, I don't think I've seen him at all this week, though. Um, and prob- no, I don't think we are due to see each other this week at all. Um, so it really depends on what's on at the time in terms of projects, sales meetings, planning sessions. Um, it's really sporadic. And tell me, I mean, IMG that that one's a pretty impressive starting um right. client, client really good it's one of, one of my favorites actually in terms of business wise um what well what's your client base looking at like now do you have clients similar to img or is it just a mixture um we we've got clients across many many different industries um and and, and so some clients kind of question us on that as well. They say, why haven't you honed in on a specific industry? But I think it's really good that we're across many, um, that the lessons we learn from different industries, we can then apply to others. Um, so, for example, we, we work with the biggest home care franchisor in the UK. Um, in fact, they're, they're the client that were working with me back when I was 16, 17. We've grown with them. They're, they're, they're absolutely amazing now. Um, so we work in home care. We work in sport. Um, we, we work in the charity sector we went to rwanda um wow. ju- just just seeing what the aegis trust are up to with their peace building activities that was really interesting uh, we work with a yoga studio we, we we work with a facilities management company um we, and we do everything from kind of web and landing pages all the way through to full integrated business systems with these guys um but yeah what, what we learn from home care some of the ways that they deal with maybe their incoming leads we can then apply that to sport or we can then apply that to charity or elsewhere. Um, the, the principles of good design, good UX, good development really can carry across any industry. No, it's, I mean, it's a wonderful story. And it, it sounds like, I mean, we're going to come on to this a bit later, but it sounds like you're in a period as well of, of, of growing yourselves as well um, in terms of, it sounds like there's some changes in the foot in the, in the offing. So we're going to talk about that in a little while, but one question, actually, that's just sprung to mind um, because there's lots of people within the remote life, work life community who who are managers themselves, um, and or they are setting up their own businesses, or you know, in the in the startup phase of their business. Um, and they're, they're, a question that I get asked quite a lot is is about business development and getting clients through. How, how, what's your approach to business development? <laughs> this is a really good one. and it does it does kind of link into what we're talking about with growing as well um, I'll, I'll be honest it's all been completely organic we've been so so lucky um, until about two or three months ago we were proud maybe wrongly as well to have said that we've never spent a penny on marketing um, that's changed now but um, yeah we, it's, it's all been completely organic um, and, and by organic I don't necessarily mean going to things like BNI meetings or those breakfast mornings but by organic I mean we've worked with companies like IMG, ATP Media, Home Instead Senior Care, the sort of really big players in their industry and just our name has been passed around. Um, and it's I, I guess I guess it's it, we, we're really fortunate to have had those those initial kind of clients come to us and, and be able to to sort of tell those stories about those success stories. We're now at a point where we're trying to grow the business. We are growing the business. Uh, our team has doubled in size in the last year. We're still getting those organic referrals, and we're still working with those fantastic clients. But we found that in order to keep the machine moving and keep keep new work coming in, keep the pipeline looking healthy, um, we've started doing things like the LinkedIn video that you saw and, and like sort of sponsored posts. There's a lot more content marketing going on as well. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, very, very organic up until very, very recently. And we're finding that 
the, the results are really interesting from the video and the, and the content that we're putting out. Um, it will never, ever lead to somebody saying, hey, guys, I'd like to give you X amount of money to do this. Yeah. It's, all, it's always the networking, the, the, the sort of creating, creating sort of relationships with people and understanding them and them understanding you. It's always about the long game. And Lou, I think, mentioned something in a, in a post. I think it was a post that I read. I can't remember if it was on your website or if it was on LinkedIn. He said something along the lines of, you're taking to a larger market and, 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 and scaling up. What, what does he mean by that? And what, what, what are you guys planning? Um, so I, I guess we, we, we need more clients. Who doesn't, right? We're, we're always looking for, for more interesting opportunities so that we can we can do what we've done for people so far um, on, a, on a bigger level for, for, for more people, for, for, for bigger clients. Um, we want to grow our team. We never want to be a team of sort of 50, 100 people. I think we're going to be fairly happy when we're sort of 15 max. Um, I just... I, I, I feel that as soon as you get larger than that, you kind of lose that 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 personal level and that personal touch. And we want to be a a small but really super effective, super efficient team. Um, so we need to get there, and, and in order to get there, we need to bring in those new clients. Sounds good to me. And you mentioned also something. I think I think it was Lou actually who might mention this. You've been documenting over the last mm. two years. Um, certain aspects of your business. Could you tell us more about that as well? Yeah, and, and we are so not done. We are so far <laughs> from being finished. Um, so I, I guess when, when it was Lou and I, everything was in our head. We never really had to write anything down. Um, Lou would deal with what he was dealing with. I would deal with what I was dealing with. We'd catch up to make sure everything's good. All brilliant. Um, when Jake joined us, there was so much in my head and in Lou's head that we needed we needed to bring Jake on board and he needed to understand how we do things, our coding standards, how we talk to clients, what our process looks like. Um, when it was just Jake, it was really easy. We just sat in a room for a couple of days and, and he just absorbed that information. But as we've grown and, we, and we've taken sort of four more people on over the last year or so, we found that I, I don't, I'm not necessarily effective having that conversation so, so many times. Mm -hmm. and, and in the world of development as well, there are so many intricate things. It, it could be down to why have you used that particular interface on that class or something like that, um, which I'm never, probably not even going to remember, but <laughs> certainly never even going to have a chat with somebody about when we're onboarding them. Our approach is to write down as much as possible, whether it's company process, whether it's sales process, whether it's our brand toolkit, um, and make those resources available to people and share as much information within the company as possible. So when somebody new joins, yes, we have an onboarding process, but when they have specific questions about specific things, I can point them towards the documentation. If the documentation is incomplete, we will complete it. Um, quite a lot of the time, I will ask them to do it because they, they have more knowledge on it than me at that point. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you work in an office, it's very easy to just go to someone's desk and ask a question. Exactly. And then that question kind of gets lost. No, no one else knows the answer to that question because that's just a conversation between two people. We really want to avoid that here at We Are Sweet. And we want to make it so knowledge and information is available to everyone in the business. And, and everything is across every project as well. Everything is available to absolutely everybody except for the, you know, the things that need to be sensitive. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's important, like you said, documentation and um, making sure that everybody knows. Uh, I suppose you're all going down the same sort of um, pathway, doing things to a similar standard, to similar sort of, um, well, just ad ad adhering to similar standards. But the fact that you've got every, you, you're sort of getting everybody else involved with this, in, with this documentation makes them feel as though they have that you know they're really sort of uh, involved in what's going yeah. on and they have a stake in what you're doing so that that it sounds brilliant to me so um you've taken on eight people so far um i'm always interested in the because one thing that um one question that people and when i say people i mean um hiring managers of remote businesses uh, even CEO, CEO level, they're all trying to think of ways to attract people. They all have their own, um, I guess, uh, challenges when it comes to attracting people. What's your, I mean, what's your your process when you're hiring? And have you had any sort of big challenges yourself when it comes to that? Hiring is probably our biggest challenge. It's it's really really tough. Um, we used to do do it ourselves. 
um we had a few kind of recruiters reach out to us but really all, in all honesty all they did was just throw cvs at us and see what stuck um they didn't really get what we were about they didn't get the remote thing they didn't get that we're really trying to be serious about this and working with really really good clients despite the fact we're remote as if that's <laughs> even a thing um so uh, after some fairly fairly frustrating experiences with recruiters, Lou and I decided to just do it ourselves uh, with, with mixed results. Um, we interviewed quite a lot of people. Um, a lot of them didn't get what we were about, didn't get the culture, didn't get what we were trying to create. Um, and don't get me wrong, we've got our great team now, but there have been other people come and go along the way as well. I mean, it's, we, we've not just we've not just arrived here mm-hmm. um, painlessly. It, it's, it's been quite a long, painstaking process. However, I must say that when it comes to recruiting developers, we found an absolutely fantastic recruiter who completely gets us, completely gets our business, does a lot of remote hiring as well. Um, And his approach is a bit different to other recruiters we've worked with. Um, He won't send us a candidate unless he knows that they are the candidate for us. So rather than getting 10 CVs through a day, it might take him three weeks to give us one CV. Um, but actually, the hires we've made from him have been the people, the only people he sent. The only people he sent we've taken on. They've been absolutely brilliant. Um, and speaking to him about the recruitment process as well, um, he does a lot of re- remote hiring, but 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 not. It's, it's not exclusively remote. He does he does he does um, recruit for a lot of office based companies. And something he said to me, which really resonated, was if I'm talking to a candidate. And all they talk about is the fact it's remote and they talk about the fact they can work from their bed in their pajamas or anything <laughs> like that. If, if they if they mention anything like that and really make a big deal out of it, then they're not for you. Um, the, 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 the people that we've taken on from, from James the Recruiter are people that have said, yeah, that's great, um, but can you tell me more about the role, please? Um, and they're the people that have actually um, found remote working most effective for them. Yeah, it's, it's, again, it's one of those things that I hear a lot, a number of times from, from people like yourself, James, is that people, again, it's this whole stigma of remote work, I think, where they immediately in their mind, they just think about, like you said, working at home in their pajamas and, yeah. you know, rather than the actual culture of your business, your mission, you know, the clients that you have, you know, where are you going to be in the next X number of years, what are your ambitions? That They don't think about those things initially. It's just, oh, remote work, I'd love to do that. You know, it's, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's, it's not the way to go. So I'm glad you reiterated that message. Um, and in terms of, okay, so you have a, a recruiter uh, who introduces you to people, but then from your standpoint, and you, you talked about culture as well, you're, you're building this, this culture I don't know if you're documenting any parts of your culture and all that sort of thing, but how do you how do you identify people who who you think are going to really sort of thrive with with We Are Sweet? It's, I think it's really a cultural thing. Um, we, I, I mainly deal with recruiting developers, so as as far as I'm concerned, if if, if you pass the tests and if I look at the code and, and it's good and and you kind of answer all the technical questions correctly, I'm I'm happy with that person as a developer. Um, but then it really comes down to culture. It comes down to understanding that yes, it's a remote team, but it's but it's it, it's real per se. Like we're we're a serious company. Um, It's also understanding that we need to pull together. um, And yeah, you might be able to have Monday afternoon off, but if you've got a deadline on Friday, you need to meet that deadline. It's about understanding that we're all working towards the same goal. Um, And actually, the the people we've taken on, in in fact, yeah, everybody, this is is their first remote role. Um, So so everybody's come from that kind of really, really sort of highly structured, infantized sort of office environment. and, and some people have kind of dealt with it in different ways as well. Like we, we've got a couple of people that really just want to work nine till five. And that, that's fine. Um, we've got someone who sometimes shows up at 11 a.m., sometimes shows up at 6 a.m. I have no idea why. Um, but <laughs> it's, it, it's really not, not my problem. As, as long as the work gets done, I'm, I'm completely happy with it. Um, yeah, people definitely mold their own experience when they're working remotely I think uh, it's sometimes tricky to 
identify how that's going to play out as well, especially if you're hiring people that have come from office based roles. They don't really know anything other than the nine till five. Mm. Um, so some people kind of they re- they really kind of go go for the whole flexibility thing. And like on week one, they're like, great, I can start at midday and I can finish at nine pm. Well, normally it's not really <laughs> does doesn't end up being quite that extreme. We're yeah. we're all we're all on at roughly the same time each morning, with a couple of exceptions, and we all finish roughly the same time in the evening as well. I think as a leader, it's really important to lead by example as well. Um, I, I, I had a stint quite recently where I was working far too many hours in the day. I was on before everyone and I was off after everyone else. And I thought I really need to put a stop to this. Mm. I don't want the team thinking that that's what we do at We Are Sweet. It, it was just purely the fact that I had personally taken on way more than I could handle. Um, and I was dealing with that in the only way I knew how, which was just get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually now I, I'm at a much more sensible point for me personally, where I'm, yeah, I'm starting between eight and nine and I'm finishing between five and six, which is good for me. It's how I work. I don't want the team seeing Lou and I or other members of the team online all hours of the day. I don't want them thinking that that's what we expect from them. It's not. And um, obviously ma- managing the team is, is something that as the, as the team grows becomes, I guess, more of a challenge for you as well. Um, I mean, it always helps when you find the right person because I suppose much of remote work, as you've, as you've alluded to, is self, is, you know, is, is self-managing. But are there aspects of yeah. um, how you, are there things that you do, tools that you use to, to sort of manage your team? Um, yeah, so uh, different people respond to different things as well. And, we, and it, it, again, even more so remotely, I think. Uh, I mean, we, we, we've got one person in particular, a- absolutely fantastic developer, but I'm not surprised if I don't get a message back from him within maybe an hour or two after messaging him. And, that, and that's not because he's not there or because he's skiving off. That's probably because he's got Slack set to DND and he's just so focused on what he's doing. And and fantastic. Like, why why should I interrupt you from the work you're doing for me? Like, absolutely. Um, people want to be managed in different ways. Um, some people need a bit more hand-holding than others, which is absolutely fine. Um, our project coordinator has been really good at this because he has a management background as well. Um, so he's come in and he's actually learned about how everyone works and how to manage them most effectively. Um, he knows what the deadlines are he knows what the requirements are and and he's been really effective at doing that in terms of other things we do to manage the team um we try and meet up as regularly as possible um so the 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 core we call it the production team the designers and the developers and the coordinator um we're the production team are based in the uk um so we'll normally meet up it's normally london but we have been to other places um it'll just be a day thing it'll be during the week um meet up do a fun activity like junkyard golf or something like that (laughs) um we'll we'll go out for a couple of drinks um and 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 just just see each other face to face shake hands and just get to know each other as like human beings rather than just people behind a screen um because when you're talking like uh, talking about software we use slack for im we use monday.com for some internal processes we use basecamp for client comms we use onedrive for sharing documents you know we use all the tools all of the cloud based stuff that should be used it's very easy to look at a Slack window and all you're seeing is text and a little avatar of someone and, and kind of forget that there's a person there um, so that that's why we find it really important to have these team meetups and, and not just internally within the team as well. E- even for me with clients, when I'm just reading somebody's email, I kind of forget that there's a person there and there's yeah. a real kind of a business objective that we're trying to achieve together with that client. So similarly with clients, we try and meet clients as much as possible. We we like we get invites to their Christmas parties and their conferences, and we always go, um, even if there's not a direct business outcome, mm-hmm. just because you, you need to see those people. You, you, you need to understand who you're working with. There's a real personal element to it. Well, you've answered my next question actually as well because it's <laughs> it sounds like you know it, 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 obviously your team is is an, is naturally you as well as a leader are naturally inclined to to work remotely because you know you've got those aspects of meeting and socialising and w- not just with your clients but with your um, with your team as well and, yeah, yeah. and managing people based on on how they like to be managed as well in, in, rather than just sort of a you know just a one way of doing things so 
sounds good. I mean, if you you know if you're listening to this, well, I know you're listening to this. Well, I think it's something that just to really, really take on board as a, as a manager that you, you you can't manage people, everybody in the, in the same way. You have to keep in touch with your with your team. You have to keep in touch with with your clients, and you can't just uh, have a, a head down mentality when it comes to work. You have to be you know, have to have your eyes open to what's going on around you and opportunities and, and growth and all that sort of thing. So it's all great there from James. And one question I always ask James, because uh, I, I was speaking to uh, Nick Francis, who's the, the CEO of, um, of, of Help Scout, and he was t- telling me about one of the most unusual places that, that he had worked in. And I think he mentioned, um, it was either Honolulu, I think it was Honolulu or Hawaii, one of those two places. Hawaii, I think it was, yeah, because he likes surfing. I, I don't know if you've uh, had any unusual places that you've worked in or, or different places and have to be unusual. Yeah, I, I guess one of the most unusual has to be Rwanda. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that we work with Aegis Trust, a charity, charitable organisation in Rwanda. So they flew us out last year and we had just this week packed full of meeting meeting everybody just seeing seeing the work they're doing firsthand which was absolutely amazing um i ended up on a in in a kind of rooftop restaurant cafe area (laughs) with my laptop at about 3 p.m local time um just just on on slack with with one of our guys here who was managing a a national website rollout um and i was here just supporting just 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 kind of being there um he, he, he was doing all the work but i i was sort of yeah yeah just kind of being there and supporting him from yeah a, a rooftop cafe restaurant in rwanda which was pretty cool well i can't beat that i can't beat that <laughs> i'm working on it though i'm working on it but it's been great to speak to you, to you though james and likewise thank you what i want to know quickly before you go is what's in store anything in store that we should know about you think with uh, we are sweet at all or is it is is really what we said we're, we're taking that approach to a wider audience we, we, we've doubled in size over the last year we want to carry on doing that um, we want to be building the most robust the most scalable the most effective web platforms and systems um, for, for for the biggest clients as well so we're, we're out there looking for those projects and we're also making sure that the team is there to to effectively deal with them <laughs>